Hello viewers, wherever you are. It's been a while since I've uh, had a night off from work and had the time to sit down and do one of my candlelight uh, blabs. I wouldn't really call this blab. Um, something had come to me last week. I'm sure you've thought of it too plenty of times. You know, my prayers usually they always have a lot to do with myself. I hate to admit it. Protect me, guide me, be with me, so forth. Help me. Teach me. Me, 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 me. So it occurred to me, what can I do to make God happy? What makes God happy? I know God is happy. Uh, I, I mean, I believe he and his kingdom are exceedingly happy, perfection happy, not the type of happiness we know here on earth uh, that is temporary, unless it's of the spirit. Um, like I get some things, you know, I've been working a lot, so I've treated myself to a few things. I'm looking at this kaolin here, which is going to be in my music. It's just a box with a foot pedal. I just got that set up so I can tap out some bass rhythm when I'm playing my accordion or guitar. So I'm working on the Missouri Waltz, by the way, for a request somebody gave me. Um, I can play it now, but it's, uh, I think it deserves a little more because I'm pretty rusty. But what makes God happy? And, well, I did a little reading. Um, what the Bible says, and that is our uh, source, our book he gave us. What's the Bible say? And when we talk about God being happy, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, um, the Trinity. Let's see what the Bible says. I could have printed this off. All right, Jeremiah 32, verse 41. God says, I will rejoice in doing them good. It makes him happy to, to do good things for us. Um, and he does. Yeah, I've got a lot of, excuse me, playing with these candles. They're not going to, there's no rhyme or reason. I've got a big box full of nothing but candles I've been making. I'm just, so I'm just using them. Um, God says in Jeremiah 32 verse 41, I will rejoice in doing them good. You know, you know how we even have a little bit of that? We're made in His image. You know, uh, I get joy out of doing good things for other people. I rarely do. I'm joking. Oh, um, yeah, let's see here. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you. Jesus said in John 15, 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you. And in Matthew 25, Verse 23, uh, Jesus says, Enter into the joy of your master. And I must say, um, on my visitations, post-mortem uh, visitations of loved ones that I've known that you've heard the stories have passed on, and then I've had visitations where they had a message. And uh, I saw my mother in her glorified state in heaven in a white robe with a gold belt looking like 30 years old again uh, whatever a perfect 30 I don't even she was a good-looking woman and uh, I don't think she was in perfection it was her but it was like perfection but she looked exceedingly exceedingly happy and joyful and full of love 
radiated out of her. It really did. It, she didn't seem like, she stood right before me and took my hands, looked me right in the eyes and said, it has to be this way. This, our separation from our loved ones, she said, just for now. And I uh, let go of my hands and she went straight up. So I got a good look at her and um, it was her. And she looked exceedingly um, joyful. So when Jesus says, enter into the joy of your master, it's a full joy, not the type of joy, like I was saying, I digress. I just got a new toy, this beatbox K.O.M. with a foot pedal. You know, but these kind of things, they, the joy from things on this earth are temporary. We're talking about the joy of our master that Jesus is referring to. And I got a glimpse of it when I saw my ma in her glorified state. Again, in uh, Proverbs 11, verse 1, it says here that he, God, delights in justice. So God loves justice. It makes him happy to see justice. Uh, in Proverbs 15, Verse 8, it says, God delights in the prayer of the upright. So, keep ourselves upright. He wants to hear from us. He Not only does he want to hear from us, he delights in it. He likes to hear from us. Um, in Psalms 147, verse 11, it says, He delights in those whose hope in his steadfast love. He delights in those who hope in his steadfast love. And I I can relate to that. You know, I say to myself, I've got nothing, I've got nobody. I've got God and his ever faithful steadfast love. And sometimes even I feel alone. But I don't think I've ever doubted um, God's steadfast love. As, as, as trying as life can be. And sometimes it's just down to hope. I hope God still loves me. You know, because I'm not feeling it right now. And, uh, you know, whatever the situation might be. It's kind of hot in here, actually. Oh. God delights in the... Um, he delights in those who hope in His steadfast love. And, you know, like I was saying, if you're down to... The, some really hard times and you ain't you're not feeling it you know we're not in heaven we're not in our glorified state we're walking this walk and it can be tough as you know very well so sometimes we just hope we have hope in God's steadfast love that he loves me the same always and I thought about that the other day that like our loved ones who've passed on, they still love us. There's no time. They're not living in time like we know it. It's unchanged, you know. They still love us just like they did when they were here. There's no reason to believe that they've changed. The time will have changed. Or death has corrupted their love for us. And God loves us. It's unchanged. I believe that. And I hope, I hope. Sometimes it's just raw hope. I mean, it hits some real low points. And it's just like, I hope God still loves me. All I've got, that's, it's enough. Moving on. Uh, it says here in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14, 15, that God delights in choosing a people. Um, so, I don't know, what can you make of that? God delights in choosing a people. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't relate that to anything personally. Um, I guess if you meet somebody and you fall in love, or you, I don't know. But I'm not laughing at the scripture, but I, I, gotta, I have to be honest. I can't relate to that one. Can you? God delights in choosing a people. And that is in Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. I like to think 
He delights in choosing a people because he enters into a relationship with people and he really loves us. And we're going to go through all kinds of things here. And he knows it, you know, at this time, at this fallen world. I don't know. God delights in choosing a people. Deuteronomy 10, 14 and 15. Ah, uh, it says in Psalms 11, or sorry, Psalms 115, verse 9, God is pleased by all he does. It says in uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, he is pleased in his son. He was happy in Jesus, proud of him. He is pleased in his son. Um, I heard God laugh. Uh that time, one of my stories when I was 11 or 12, the name of the story is a choice, choice between two paths. I know I heard him laugh. And uh, when I was afraid that picking a hard path in life, I thought about it because he had me pause and think about it. And I saw myself at this age as being alone angry, bitter at times, depressed. And he showed me that path when I was 11. I got to remind myself, I chose that. But I was worried because when you're before God, I'm telling you, you just want to please him. You want to make him happy. Uh, really wonderful presence. And I thought, well, what if I get to where I'm at now and I'm angry at life and uh, things? And I asked God, I said, what if my bitterness, these were my words verbatim, what if my bitterness makes me turn from you? And I asked him that. I didn't see him, but his presence was in my room. That's the story, choice between two paths. And he laughed. He laughed a good-natured laugh. And he said, oh, Nothing could ever separate me from you. And he laughed some more and he said, Nothing could ever separate me from you. He thought it was cute and he was pleased that I would worry about that. That's what I got. And uh, that's something. And I do I feel special? You better believe I feel special. But I also feel obligated to tell you this. That's why I tell these things, everything. Because I've had a lot of experiences. And I want to share these with you. I think, I was thinking about this tonight before I made this video. Um, I was thinking, I've seen these things, that's why I make these. And I've had these experiences, and it's my testimony. And so have a lot of people, and yourself. You should tell people about it. It's your testimony. That's what I think. You can do whatever you want. I don't know, but that's what I think. But my faith must not be as good, as strong as most Christians. Because if I didn't see all these things that I've told on this channel, uh, and God didn't work in my life like he did, I mean, I saw the angels when I was four or five years old, and um, I knew who they were. I mean, even at that age, I saw these, and they were beautiful, and I, I knew that it was a gift for me to see them. So I've always believed, but I've also seen. And before I was four or five years old, uh, that's why I said I knew who they were. Um, I don't have any, a lot of Christian memories before that. That encounter with the angels was the first one. But I knew who they were. I think I've always believed in God. But I think a lot of people haven't seen these things. Uh, their faith must be much stronger than mine, because I have. And I humbly feel that I'm responsible to tell people about this. And even back when I was four or five years old, when I saw those two magnificent angels in white shining robes standing in that stream smiling down at me. Um, 
I thought to myself, I'm going to tell people about this as long as I live. It's my little treasure to share with people. That's what I thought at that age. You know, I had three angel encounters, and all of them, I put this together, they all took place in water or over water. Uh, the first one was this one. The two magnificent angels were standing in a stream in shining white robes. They looked like they were about 25 feet tall. They are giants. I don't know how tall they were, but they were, they were pretty tall. Big, giants, magnificent, glorious looking they look like uh, Vikings, blonde, brown hair, shoulder length, muscular, very good natured, a gleam in their eyes, they're smiling at me. But I knew who they were, so I must have known God, oh God, but I give my mom credit too for reading the Bible to me a lot throughout my childhood and taking me to church. That maybe that's how I knew who they were, I don't know. But the other time, the angel, the man that saved my life on the bridge, that's the story. The man on the bridge, I believe he was an angel. He saved my life, and then, then he vanished. Well, it was on a, a railroad bridge over the Kanawha River. And the other time, I believe that old black man in a swamp in Georgia, on my first parachute jump, I told that story on here as well. Just look up parachute jump. Man in a swamp, I don't know. Uh, that was in a swamp, and that man probably saved my life, and he seemed very good-natured, laughing, full of joy, and then he vanished. He just vanished. There was, nowhere, there was nowhere he could have gone. He just vanished. So, saved my life, mysteriously, good-natured, vanishes. I figure he was an angel. So, what gives God joy? Um, that's all the verse. Oh, he's well pleased with his son. I read that one. That's all the verses I have. Uh, I would say you give, you make God happy. You make God happy when you persevere, when you have hope in his love, when all else has failed you and the chips are down, the times aren't so great. You still love God and you hope He loves you too. You hope He loves you too. That that said that in that verse. He delights in those whose hope is it in his steadfast love, faithful love. Um, it's one thing when everything's going great in life, and sometimes it does. I I've had seasons in my life where I had to say to myself at the end of the day, man, that's had a really good really good day, you know, uh, everything, I couldn't ask for a better day, I've had a wonderful day, I'm surrounded by people I love, um, you know, and everything went perfect, <laughs> you know, and I've got some quirky ways, uh, what my idea of a good day is sometimes, usually ends up with some, around the fire, letting off fireworks, listening to the music, having some good laughs, good food, good company, the same things that people have been doing all over the world for thousands of years. And good fellowship and just everything went perfect. Perfect. And um, yeah, it's one thing when times are like that. And say, thank you for a great day, Lord. It's a wonderful day. It's another when things are looking too good at all and you're crushed. Maybe you're grieving like I've been grieving heavily still. And uh, people have let you down, all kinds of, people will fail you. And a good friend is hard to find sometimes. And you don't even have your dog. But you've got hope. I, God loves me, right? God loves me. I know he loves me. I hope he loves me. God, you love me still, right? You love me. I know you do. Thank you, Lord. And just saying that will shift gears out of the, good way to shift gears out of the deep blue funk. Get you through the valleys. And your hope is in the Lord, that his love is steadfast. So, you make God happy. 
we can also make him sad, sorrowful, I'm sure, troubled, hopefully not angry. Wouldn't want God angry at me. No, no thanks. I think it says the beginning of wisdom is in fear of the Lord. Hey, Google. What does the Bible say about wisdom and the fear of the Lord? According to the Marian Star, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Watch this. Hey, Google. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> I don't know, AI, huh? It's evil or is it good? I don't know. I like that. That's so, it's so cool, isn't it? The fear of the Lord. I wouldn't want God mad at me. And uh, I'm not saying I live perfect, so I have to pray for forgiveness and repent. But we make God happy. We can make him happy. His son Jesus makes him happy. I've seen joy on my mother's face in heaven. And that, that, I uh, revisit that often. And I know you just got to believe what I'm saying or don't. Or believe it, yes, a little more. Who knows, maybe. Or you could say, he thinks he did. You know, that's true. I do think I did. And I've thought about it a lot. That really happened. There's no way I, I just came up with that. My Ed... Uh, and she looked very happy, very, very full of joy. She was a happy, joyful person anyway. She was the most optimistic human being I've ever met anywhere in my life. That would be my mom. I was with her when she had her mastectomy, double mastectomy, and... The doctors failed to get the cancer, and she was. they said she was in her 12th hour of her cancer battle, and they didn't expect her to make it. And I said, you know what? She just had faith in God, and uh, she just went about her business, you know, as best as she could, bald-headed, sick, just doing the best she could. Didn't really, never really heard her complain, why me, or any of that. My mom had rock-solid face, faith face sorry <laughs> sorry mom <laughs> you get rock solid face sorry mom she would be laughing right now if she heard that which i believe they can hear it us um it's my belief so what makes god happy if you have anything to add because i answered this the best way i could there's definitely images throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament, of God the Father, God the Son, uh, as being happy and referring to joy and happiness and complete, not the joy of this world. Hey, Google. Let me see if I can get some. Got it. Taking a screenshot. No. Oh. Hey, Google. What does the Bible say about the joy of this world? According to his dearly loved daughter ministries, our joy is in the presence of the Lord too. Psalm chapter 16 verse 11, you will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasure of living with you forever. Psalm chapter 68 verse 3, but let the godly rejoice. Let them be glad in God's presence. Let them be filled with joy. Hey Google, thank you. I know it's just a application. Hey, you know, I, it's no. I'm at work and I work with robots, uh, robotic arms that just go all around building things, and I talk to them all the time, uh, threaten them sometimes. So that's at least this one answers me. So, I'm a very talkative person. If you haven't put that together, I, I talk to people all the time. I got tonight off. Because I was supposed to have a root canal done where I broke a tooth. So I told myself, take tonight off. 
If you get your root canal done, I was going to reward myself. Take tonight off, do whatever you want to do. Make some videos, have a beer after the videos. Um, and you know what? I was late. I was 30 minutes late. They had, they had to reschedule it anyway. So I didn't get the root canal. Fortunately, it doesn't really hurt at this point. So I got the night off. So I want to make this video. I've got a lot of videos. A lot. And some I'm really looking forward to making. I'm going to put a lot of work into it. But this was one that was on my list. Um, what makes God happy? And I thought about it. Let's keep making that video. Well, I think the fact that I'm making this video would make God happy. Right? The fact that you're watching it would make God happy. The fact that you're sharing your thoughts about it would make God happy. I think we're his children. He loves you. Like, like you're the only one other than his son. Right? You know what I mean? So, yeah, the little things we do count. The little things. I don't mean to preach so much. I wanted to tell you all, thank you, uh, for, this is so one-sided, this communication. It's like I'm having a conversation with you, but I'm not really using my listening skills, am I? And uh, so it's very one-sided. And but I want to thank each of you for your company in this way. Honestly, through the years, some of the things you all have said have really helped me out seriously and sometimes I don't get back to you right away and I guess a few times I never get back sometimes it might take me a year I say oh I should answer that sometimes I'll read some comments I'll, I'll think about it. I think that deserves a better answer than just a, a thumbs up but you know I'm pretty busy you know how it is but I want to thank each of you for your time and quite frankly your company uh, in this way I mean like I said I think we're all connected. We're all connected, all people. So it's in the spirit. And we're part of the family of God. We're definitely connected in that. And we all love the same God. We're God loves you. You love God. I mean, we have the same creator. We're in the same family. So I hope each of you are persevering and doing well and hang in there. And know that when the chips go down and hard and life gets painful and hard and you know what I'm saying, lonely and and just, just remember God loves you and hope on that, hope on that. And like it said, God delights in those whose hope is in the steadfastness of his love. They can say, like with Job, you know, with Job. Look at this man, you know, he's beaten down, broken, family died, lost everything he had, even his health. Reputation, you know, every, he guy lost everything. And he still loved God. And that made God pretty happy. He's pretty proud of him. He restored Job in the end of the book. We'll all be restored, whether we're restored on the earth, like Job was restored while he was still on the earth, or you may be your restoration, and you get your reward after this this uh, weary, weary hour we all have here, this weary hour. So, all right, I've blabbed enough. Uh, I've got a couple other videos I'm going to make. I actually had a little bit of a haunting tonight. Not here, but I'm going to share that. And honestly, I got the night off. I'll probably do a beer review because I feel like having a beer. Fruit goes first. Fruits go to God. So I'll make this first. And um, let's make God happy, huh? Let's make Him happy. He knows our needs. He knows our weaknesses. And uh, I've got to speak for myself. Because like I said, this whole idea had come to me. Let, let's ask the people, what makes God happy? What do you know? What do you think? Because I'm always praying, me, 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 me. Now and then I'll pray for some other people. 
But, you know, I talk to God a lot through the day. A lot. And I talk to people about God more and more. I find myself sharing the good news every chance I get without... I personally don't like to browbeat people with it, but I definitely uh, don't hide it either. And God will give you the right opportunities when to share the good news. It's right there. He'll set you up with a perfect, you know, like bowling. You know, you hit that strike. He'll give you that perfect, that didn't, that's not a good allegory. He'll set you up. If you ask him to put you to work, he will give you the opportunity. Oh, I know also I wanted to say I forgot that the most joy I have ever experienced on this earth, and I've known a lot of sorrow and you've seen a lot of it, but I've also known a lot of joy too and good times, love and happiness, where my cup runneth over. But the most joy I've ever personally experienced is sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and how wonderful our God is. And uh, I do that through my testimony. And you've got a testimony too. Every day we have a testimony. So that's the most joy. It's a different type of joy. It's uh, almost like... If I'm a light bulb that's 60 watts, you know, I'm a 60 watt light bulb. Well, when I'm sharing God's joy, I've got like 300 watts of electricity going through me. It, it's a lot. It will it really illuminate you inside. It'll light you up really good. You know, too, when you're, I've been in the presence of the Holy Spirit a few times, and it's like a static I thought, I thought, when I did that story, God in an army truck, I was in that presence there, and he worked a miracle that day. He did his work through me because I listened. And uh, but God in an army truck, I told that story about five years ago. Five, yeah, about five years, six, five or six years ago. Six years ago now, easily. God in an army truck. God in an army truck. I was in an army truck when it happened. And it's just like when his presence come to me when I was 11 or 12 and I was given the choice to pass. His presence to a human. I mean, when we're in the spirit, it'll be something I can't tell. I haven't done it. I haven't, you know, like my mom is there. Hopefully Jen's there and others that I love. Um... She'd be there, I'm sure. A faith in God, a good God. I know she loved God and she sought Him. And her life got really hard. That's another. But when I was in His presence, it's like a static electricity in the atmosphere. And you could feel, you know who it is, there's no doubt. And it's, there is a joy, a happiness uh, that's unworldly. And it is just, it can over, it will overwhelm you. I mean, the first time, I just hit the floor. I knew I was in the presence of God. Not nobody sees him. I, I think uh, who was it? Um, oh, how can I forget this? Abraham perhaps saw him. Or Moses, Moses. I can't believe I. Uh, Hey, Google, who did God give the Ten Commandments to? The prophet Moses, according to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. All right, that time, stop. That's enough. It's in our, our Bible. Moses, he saw God. Turned his hair white. I think he, he might, maybe he might even been blind for a while from it. I don't know. But no, I didn't see God, but his presence was with me. And it can be with you too. And I think a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But there is a joy and a happiness and a love and a power in it. So what makes God happy? You can make God happy. You do. 
leave you with that. Good night. <laughs>